thank you all for joining us for our don't give all your money to the nursing home. And I think judging um, by the base of the numbers of people that registered today, this is an important topic that people need to um, know about. So today's speaker is Samantha Gentle. She's an associate attorney here with us at Generations Law Group. Um, she does all of our long-term care planning, mass health applications, mass health planning. Um, I'm sure there's more that I'm just glossing right over, uh, but those are the biggies. And of course, estate planning. Um, and I'm Carol Anderson. I'm the marketing director here. Um, with all of that, I'm going to turn this over to Samantha. Okay, so I'm doing my presentation today on <clears throat> how to protect assets and not just give it all away to the nursing home if you ever need long-term care. So now uh, cost of nursing home care is estimated to be about $500 a day or um, it keeps going up and up. One way you, if you are really planning ahead, you can certainly get long-term care insurance. Um, it requires early planning, usually in your 40s or 50s. The earlier you do it, you know, the more affordable it's going to be. Um, with proper minimum coverage, it can help potentially um, prevent a lien on your home from mass health if you need nursing home placement. Um, and then you may be able to avoid doing an irrevocable trust, which I'll talk about later. The uh, but there's a lot of difficulties involved with this working properly. It's a little bit hard to plan because the policy still needs to be in effect when you go to a nursing home. So, you know, some people may use up their policy all at home or in assisted living before they move to a nursing home facility. So, but with the right scenario, it can work. Um, there are some new hybrid policies where you can sort of draw on the policy to pay for long-term care as opposed to the older policies where you, if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, these policies won't um, protect against a mass health lien though. And if there's a cash value, that will count as an asset of the, the person who owns the policy. So estate planning really can help uh, with asset protection and planning ahead uh, for a nursing home. Um, having a healthcare proxy, everyone needs that over the age of 18, having that in place can help avoid a guardianship. Um, and a durable power of attorney, also extremely important. That names someone to make financial decisions for you if you can no longer make them for yourself. It's extremely important that a durable power of attorney is drafted by an elder law attorney because we understand the longevity of these documents and how they need to be used. Durable powers of attorney can say so many different things. And um, with the durable power of attorney, a lot of our clients that are have are now in a nursing home may have lost the ability to make decisions for themselves and may have a memory issue. So the power of attorney is really important to be able to protect assets and move assets around. Needs to have very broad authority. So if you get it online or um, if you get it, if it's really old, it may be missing some authority. And the whole point of having this document is to avoid needing a conservatorship oh. through the probate and family court. Um, and even if you do have a power of attorney, but it's a weak document and it's missing authority, they, you may still need court authority to be able to actually protect your assets before going to a nursing home. Um, an irrevocable trust can, uh, you can put a home in the trust and have help avoid a lien on your home or, or if in the home care situation, it would be in the estate recovery unit making a claim against the estate. Um, the irrevocable trust needs to be funded and drafted more than five years before needing nursing home level care. Mass Health nursing home coverage has a five year look back period. They look for transactions of $1,000 or more. So obviously transferring a house would be more than $1,000. Um, putting the house in the irrevocable trust um, is very restrictive. Um, you 
and it only works in certain circumstances. You can, it needs to be more than five years before needing the care. The house needs to be mortgage free. So the house needs to be paid off. Mortgage companies won't let you put the house in the trust if there's still a mortgage. Um, the value of the home and also money can also be put in the trust too, if there, if you have enough available, but, um, the, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, the house needs to be not part of your retirement plan. So if you have a plan to potentially draw on the value of your home to be able to fund your retirement or, or if you need to make repairs or what have you, or if you're thinking you'd like to stay home longer and to get a reverse mortgage, irrevocable trust is not right for you. Um, you also lose control over the property. So you have to name other trustees, uh, not yourself to manage the property. And, um, and then the beneficiaries are potentially your kids or other people you name. The trust is seen as a gift to those beneficiaries. So that's why it affects the five-year look back period. Um, so it's very special circumstances where these trusts work. Um, the other a uh, common pl estate planning tactic we use in, when we're doing mass health or Medicaid planning is our wills with testamentary supplemental needs trust. This is used for married couples. Um, when you've got a cup married couple and one of the spouses needs mass health, we move all the assets over to the well spouse or the healthy spouse. And if they were to pass away, we don't want all, if they predecease the one that needs nursing home care, we don't want all that money going back to the person in the nursing home because then they'll lose their mass health benefit. Normally we tend to advise clients to try to avoid probate, but in this situation, we actually have to have assets go through probate. So a will is a set of instructions to the probate court for what to do with your probate property probate properties, property owned individually in your own name. So when we're moving assets over to the wealth spouse, we usually designate some of those assets to be probate assets. So owned in that spouse's individual name with no joint owners and no beneficiaries. If that spouse unexpectedly passes away before the spouse in the nursing home, those assets will go through the public process of probate and then fund a trust called a supplemental needs trust that's actually inside their will. This trust will allow money to be there for their surviving spouse's supplemental needs while they're alive. And the state can't touch the money. After that spouse passes away, then it can be inherited by the kids or whomever else they chose. Um, there are several last minute asset protection measures that can be done. And please do not do these without the advice of an elder law attorney. One of those is a prepaid irrevocable funeral contract. Um, Mass Health has a real weird rule that these contracts cannot pay for flowers or food. Um, and then to make it even weirder, you can have a fifteen hundred dollar prepaid. I mean, sorry. Uh, $1,500 burial savings account um, that you can set up at a bank. It doesn't count towards the person's asset limit for mass health. Um, and then mass health doesn't really track what's done with these accounts when the person passes away. So theoretically you could use these for flowers or food. Um, for married couples, as I mentioned before, you can trans we transfer all the assets over to the community spouse. And we can also transfer the home to the community spouse. And I apologize, I didn't update this slide with the 2024 figures, um, but I have it on a later slide. Um, if the community spouse is over their asset limit, then the uh, we can actually take all the money over that asset limit and set up a single premium immediate annuity or a Medicaid annuity. Um, for single individuals, another option is a what's called a pooled disability trust. 
unfortunately, as of spring of this year, only people over, uh, sorry, only people under 65 can fund these trusts. So in most circumstances, um, people are not going to be going to nursing home under 65, but sometimes, unfortunately, that does happen. So it can be a last minute asset protection item. But for the moment, if I have any clients that are under 65 and disabled, I recommend they consider doing one of these trusts now, not necessarily throwing all their money in it um, because they should still be able to be independent and do what they want with their money. But consider funding one of these if you're under 65 and currently disabled. Um, another last minute asset protection measure that we can do in some circumstances is what's called the caretaker child transfer of the house. In this situation, the, it only works with a child. So it can't be a grandchild. It can't be a niece or nephew, which is unfortunate because sometimes that happens. And I think that it would be nice to be expanded to those people. But the so the child needs to have lived with the elder for over two years. It needs to have been their primary residence. So that means that they can't have their own apartment, but then maybe do overnights at their parents' house. It needs to be their primary residence. There needs to be evidence of that. And the level of care that they need provided for those two years needs to have been enough to prevent the elder from needing nursing home level care sooner. So we usually get, you know, doc, uh, doctors writing letters if there are any home care agencies also used that witness the care. We have them write a letter, anybody else, you know, family members and the, the caretaker themselves have signed an affidavit outlining the level of care. And then we can do that transfer. Um, sometimes there, you know, it can get a little tricky if there's a lot of siblings and if there's disagreement about this transfer. So we sometimes will then, if there's a lot of siblings who are expecting, you know, and if the elder intended for the house to go to everybody, not just one child, then we have a family agreement and that child that's getting the home after a mass health application is approved, then they can then split their, you know, sign their deed over now to the remaining siblings and they can all own a share of the home. So we do that sometimes as well. Um, if there is a disabled child involved, the unlimited amounts of money can be given to that disabled child. However, um, you have to be careful in terms of what you know, they need to have been determined to be disabled by Social Security. If they haven't, then you need they'll need to go through a whole process with MassHealth's Disability Determination Unit to determine if they think this person is in fact disabled. And if they are receiving any public benefits, you have to be really careful because you don't want to mistakenly get them kicked off of their benefits by giving them money. So you may need to set up a special needs trust or supplemental needs trust for that person. So will mass health be needed? So um, sorry, I didn't update this one number, but the for home care, the income limit for 2024 is $2,829 a month. The asset limit for both home care and nursing home care is $2,000. If it's a married couple, that's and they're both applying for mass health, it's a $3,000 asset limit. The spousal asset limit applies to both home, home care and nursing home care. It does not apply to PACE. Um, that is $154,140. And then the maximum equity allowed in a home at the moment is $1,071,000. Um, if someone is over the income limit and wants to apply for mass health, they may still be able to qualify for the mass health frill or waiver or home care program, but they may need to pay a large deductible every six months. For the mass health pace program, if they're in the community, they can usually pay basically a monthly fee to the pace provider. Uh, for the amount that they're over income. That does not work, however, if you're trying to be on pace in assisted living. 
So I mentioned this earlier, the five-year look back period applies to nursing home, mass health. They look at every transaction of a thousand dollars or more. This includes money in and out of your bank account, um, transfer of cars, transfer of real estate, uh, stocks, life insurance, et cetera. Um, common mistakes that have that I see all the time in relation to the five-year look back period is, you know, giving money to family members or friends, making big donations, um, and an accountant informing you that you can make an annual gift tax exclusion gift of $18,000 a year. That's okay for taxes. It's not okay for mass health. Um, you know, withdrawing lots of cash regularly, that can look suspect to mass health. It's better to use a debit card or write checks or use a credit card. Um, having multiple accounts at multiple banks. I've seen accounts get forgotten all the time and mass health has a way of searching your social security number. So I'll get a request for information from mass health and it could have an account on there that I haven't heard of because the, the client forgot about an account. Um, another one is paying a caretaker under the table. That happens quite a bit. Um, it's best in that situation to speak with an elder law attorney about setting up a care contract with that caretaker. And there are payroll companies that will do one-to-one -one payroll. That's the best way to make sure that the, um, that mass health will not see this as a gift. Um, you know, and then also, as I covered before, you know, transferring a car or real estate of any, any value can affect the five-year look back period. Um, the, another mistake that happens sometimes is people will transfer their home to their children and retain a life estate in their home. A life estate basically gives you the right to live in and also maintain your home. So pay all the house bills. If your home's rented out, you're entitled to the rental income. And um, and then once you pass away, the life estate is released, and then whoever you named as your remainder man on your deed will then own the home in full. However, um, while you're alive, if and you're in your home, if you've transferred basically the ownership of your home to someone else, and then that person gets sued or uh, gets divorced, then your potentially your primary residence is at risk because now it's considered an asset of theirs. So that's why we tend to recommend the, an irrevocable trust versus doing the life estate because it protects your home in a better way. And then of course, not having a durable power of attorney or having one, but not knowing where the original is because original is needed for banking and real estate transfers. Sam, there's a question um, mm -hmm. going back to the disabled child transfer. Um, mm -hmm. does a child have to have to have been disabled since childhood or could it be an adult offspring? Uh, no, it certainly does not need to be since childhood. Okay. Um, it's ju it just needs to be, uh, they just need to be determined to be disabled by social security. It's fine if it happened during adulthood. Okay. Someone asked, what is PACE? That's a great question. So let me give a overview of mass health and then explain how PACE is different, even though it is a mass health program. So there are two federal programs, Medicare and Medicaid. Medicare is health insurance for when you're retired or disabled. Medicaid is health insurance for low income individuals, but can also pay for long-term care either at home or in a nursing home. Medicaid is administered by state agencies and that state agency in Massachusetts is mass health. So with Mass Health, you've got the Mass Health Nursing Home Care. There's there's many Mass Health programs, but the ones that pertain to this uh, presentation, we've got Mass Health Nursing Home, we've got Mass Health Frail Elder Waiver, which is the home care program, and PACE, and that's um, program for all inclusive care for the elderly. And um, all are Mass Health programs. And like I said previously, the PACE program has the same income limit, um, though a 2800 and change, same asset limit of $2,000. The way it's different, it, PACE one, there's a, a focus on 
um, adult day health, which also you can have adult day health in the um, frail elder waiver as well, but there's a big focus on adult day health. And then they also have these centralized locations around the state uh, where all of their doctors are. So another thing that some people don't like about PACE that turns them off right away is you have to change all your doctors to the PACE doctors. But they have these centralized locations. The PACE provider just provides listening. transportation and um, there's adult day health at the location. You can get lunch, there's activities. And so they you know, they try to make it a pleasant experience and the, all their doctors have low patient numbers and, and specialize on working with the elderly. Um, you also have to switch to their health insurance. Um, I'm not sure if all of them are Fallon health, but the one that is closest to our office, the, um, summit elder care does Fallon health. And, um, I think they, you know, so they've got the adult day health and home care options. And I've just been getting a lot of positive feedback from people who are recently applying to PACE. It only recently became available in the last year and a half to the Middlesex County, which is to, the, I mean, sorry, not Middlesex County, Metro West. I apologize. I meant Metro West. So a lot of our clients are in Metro West. The, I, I do know um, the physicians that the, patient sees um, meet regularly, like they have a team yes. of physicians and they meet regularly to discuss the individual's health care. Correct. And so, and thank you. That reminded me as well. So the, in addition, I know what the, um, the adult day health that's located in Framingham for our, for the Metro S people, they also have satellite offices, doctor's offices at the adult day health. So the closest one to our office is in Worcester um, for the doctor's offices, but the the person on pace may only need to go to Worcester once a year. And then if they need to see a specialist or one of their doctors, they may be able to see them at the satellite location. So I think they, you know, they do their best to try to make it as convenient as possible. Um, and I saw another question come through. Yep. Can, Can I give, give 50,000 per year to my children slash grandchildren to pay for a new car or college? Not if you are thinking you're going to need nursing home care less than five years from the last gift. Sorry, Donna. <laughs> I mean, you can do whatever you want, yes, but, <laughs> but if, you're, if you're planning on having mass health pay for your nursing home care, then cannot do that, you know, more than, you know, so I have a client, that I just saw today that did a very large gift to his family, taking them on a big trip. And I said, okay, that needs to be the last big gift. <laughs> let everybody know, let we'll put everyone on notice. They're not getting anything else out of you. And let's hopefully make it more than five years from this trip. And that would be gifts um, over a thousand dollars. Correct. Okay. Yes. So what if we did nine hundred ninety nine dollars? Is that I think okay? That would that be a little risky. Um, okay. <laughs> I, Just ask. And I can't make any. Can never make any guarantees because um, I did have one mass health caseworker in one of my most complicated applications flag a transaction of two hundred dollars because she saw a transfer of. Um, of $200 to another account. It was just mom paying daughter back for groceries. But then I had to show the daughter's bank account to show that the mom's name wasn't on the ad account. So it's it's supposed to be $1,000 transactions, but because an account number was referenced in the bank statement, then we had to do all this extra work. So they were trying to make sure they it wasn't a gift, but also not another account because these people probably had like 30 accounts, which goes back to my point to please don't have a million accounts at all different banks. Um, let's go to the next one. Can you talk more about pros and cons of long-term care insurance and typical range of costs? I'm a little nervous to give in details because I know there's some people in this meeting that specialize in selling long-term care insurance. Mm -hmm. um, and I may misspeak, but it, so it's probably best if you speak to an agent that specializes in long-term care insurance 
to know the ins and outs, but um, I, I wouldn't know the range and costs. It, there's a lot of factors that go in, involved, but certainly the earlier in life you get it, the better your rates are going to be. And again, I think it gives you a little bit more freedom to have more money to also, you know, if your goal, some people, the goal is to stay at home as long as possible, other people, you know, but it also can pay for assisted living. So that can help you in the future as well, because people can do really well for a long time at assisted living. Um, but yeah, I think definitely reach out to an agent. And if you need some referrals, we certainly have them. And Tom uh, chimed in, he does long-term care insurance. And he said, um, there's no perfect solution and buy what you can afford. <laughs> Something is better than nothing. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> I encourage you to go check out our YouTube channel. We have many videos up there on from basic estate planning to guardianships and conservatorships and talking more about what's involved in, in a, obtaining the guardianships, conservatorships, what you have to do if you are named as someone's guardian or conservator. So there's all kinds of information there. Um, there's a little further in depth videos of um, probate and um, it's pro should you have a will or a trust, which one is better to have. So all kinds of videos that we've done over the years. So I encourage you to go check those out. And of course, our website has many articles and eBooks um, that are free to download. So feel free to go to generationslawgroup.com for that information. Um, Sam, thank you so much for all that information today. Thank you all for taking time out of your day and joining us and for your questions. And we will see you on the next one. Bye.